just go away. Okay. Do what you want. All right, everybody. So just start with your name and your position. Okay. Uh, Christine Dennis, Assistant Superintendent of Student Achievement. Great. Chris, thanks so much for giving us time today. You bet. Um, let's start with uh, looking at leadership in the district. I know you've been here how many years? Uh, I've been here 16. 16, 16 okay. years, yes. And we're kind of focusing on, on the last 10 or 11 years or so mm -hmm. and trying to gain an understanding of, of uh, how the district came to, to this uh, number one rating with the Education mm -hmm. Trust uh, study. Okay. And one of the things we're, we're looking at is, is leadership. Uh, mm -hmm. And have you seen changes in the, in the way district and school level leadership are operating mm -hmm. that you think have helped in this area? Or has it kind of just been, been the status quo? What, what do you see? Well, certainly it hasn't been status quo. Um, one thing that uh, we're very fortunate to have, Jim, is that we have a very stable board that has created a wonderful strategic plan with a vision. And as important as that, we have a superintendent who has been here for over 10 years. When you look at some, or probably longer than that, okay? And when, we t when you talk about that, that really, uh, begins to share with the community, share with teachers, classified and community, that education is very important. I think, Jim, what we've done here in the Baldwin Park Unified School District is that we had a superintendent and board that said, the status quo isn't enough. Uh, our facilities don't, aren't up to standards. Our testing is not up to standards. Uh, you'll cut all this out, right? Um, and uh, that we made the decision that it's not enough to have high expectations. There were expectations, but these high expectations had to have impact and meaning to the students in the district. So when we take a look at it, uh, we've looked at leadership through the lens of um, working with our principals, working in the professional development, having them have an opportunity to look at programs. I'm and pro stop just because. Um, I don't know, I'm rambling. I'm, no. no, you're fine, just no, for some reason I'm getting, well, I don't know why, because I did this pretty good. And you're not moving either. Okay. And you're hitting things that no one else is hitting. Yeah. Okay. But trust me, you're, you're right on track. You ready? Yeah. <coughs> what we've done is we've had an opportunity to look at professional development through our principals here in the district. And to be an educational leader on a campus, you need to know all facets of what it takes to be a leader. The management piece is so very important. We know that if you don't manage well, uh, those problems will come back. We've shared how you look at managing through um, culture and climate, how you develop a school of high expectations and support through the parents. We've looked at programs. Our programs have uh, deepened through hands-on staff development, sharing that uh, our students are as capable as any. We've done that through um, looking at increasing our honors programs, our AP programs at the high school level. We've looked at honors programs at the uh, elementary level. We've also looked at how do we shore up those skills of the students that may not be making it at the elementary level. And we've done that through intervention programs and really a consistency of looking at instruction. How do I as a principal go into a classroom, Jim, and really take a look at and, and diagnose a lesson? I'm one of the, the old gals in the district now, and I say that with great cardinal caring in that really we need to ask the students why. And we need to have them buy in, uh, take a look at what they're doing, getting back to what we've looked at, the Bloom's taxonomy. We're looking at, uh, at the, the lesson and being able to see where we need to have the teacher with their tool box through the principal, take a look at what they need to improve on in their lesson uh, delivery. So um, we've allowed our principals to grow, yet we've had accountability, principal's accountability plan and goals that, that wrap around really 
uh, with regard to our superintendent and board's vision through our strategic plan. So I'm very proud of what we've done over the, the past 10 years. And of course, we've seen that through Ed Trust West, where you can really show, shore up those skills with the expectations, but also we need the programs that can help these students move ahead. One of the interesting things to me has been the massive budget cuts, 30 mm -hmm. to 40 percent, I think, mm -hmm. over the last five years. Uh, Baldwin Park is one of the school districts that seem to have kept the, the visual and performing arts, mm -hmm. vocational ed, uh, and, and seems to have kept a focus on the whole child, not just that yes. academic portion. Can you give us some, some hint of some of those kinds of things that, that go on in your district? Absolutely, Jim. Uh, I think you're, at, you're spot on when it comes to the whole child. Uh, when you look at the Baldwin Park Unified School District with the poverty rate that we have, 85% or more with free and reduced lunch, with really no um, foundation that could backfill the arts, our board and superintendent and our community have embraced the arts. We have not gone away with orchestra or band for our students. And we know that research shares, uh, shows, Jim, that uh, um, when a child is involved in music, whether it be orchestra at the elementary, middle, high school level, whether it's choir, band, or the visual and performing arts, the arts, the, the drama, um, that certainly gets them connected to a school. And we know that research says, again, not to uh, continue to, uh, that uh, that improves their academics in the classroom also. Um, if you come to our boardroom here in the district office, we're very proud of what we have as far as the visual and performing arts uh, in that every year we change out our artwork. We have been award winners across the, the state and we have uh, several yearly, several of our pictures hanging in Washington, D.C. and Congresswoman Grace Napolitano's classroom. What a great way, too, to get parents involved. Um, when you look at parent involvement as being a very key, that is a key to it. Um, the, the boosters that we have for our orchestra and our band, the boosters for our uh, drama programs here in the district. Uh, we also run, which I think is just phenomenal, we have a house at Baldwin Park High School that does its own film. Uh, they, they film um, institutes uh, at our PAC Center here. And, and if you've ever been in Baldwin Park, which Jim, I know you have, we have a performing arts center that is the, the envy uh, of the valley. Um, of course, with that, balancing that, we offer a plethora also of co-curricular activities and athletics. We have not cut any of our athletics. Uh, we're very proud that our children are able to uh, be involved in sports and athletics teams at each one of our high schools, which also gives a connection, doesn't it, to, to the school. You want children to feel connected to their school no matter which way you look at it, whether it's clubs, whether it's the arts, whether it's athletics. A big part of what I believe, uh, and the, the data shows it, that we've done here also is we developed an, an after-school program. We have a partnership with Think Together. Uh, Think Together has been in the after-school program out of Santa Ana for close to 15 years. Uh, we have an ACES grant from the state, uh, one of the grants that could never be rolled into the general fund, to allow our students to have K-8 to have a safe and secure environment to come to, uh, Jim. And uh, uh, what we do, we have a close to 2,000 kids that every day after school, about 120 per campus, have an opportunity to have a great snack. They have an opportunity to do their homework, but they also have an opportunity to do enrichment programs, uh, STEM-type uh, opportunities where they develop thematic approaches to what they may be reading during the day in the classroom. Um, we're really proud of that, that piece of it. We're also well known throughout the country uh, with regard to what we've done to bring down the obesity rate. We have what's called a Healthy Eating Active Living Grant here in the district, one that has been funded by the California Endowment through the California Center of Public Health Advocacy, Advocacy also the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation. We took a look about uh, 2006 that our kids were at 34 percent at risk and were overweight. We said that's not good enough. Our superintendent said, we've got to do something. Our board embraced that. So we brought a grant in. And what we did was we developed a curriculum 
PE curriculum with coaches throughout the K-6 schools here in Baldwin Park. We brought in uh, the K uh, game day curriculum. With that also, uh, that app, timeout. Okay, I talked about the after school program. I'm kind of going on a roll. Now I'm over at the healthy living, active living. I'm sorry, I'm old. I, I lost it there for a second. Okay, and so with that, we trained teachers K-6 to really embrace 200 minutes of PE every 10 days. Um, that made a difference. Uh, we are now 20%, is it good enough? No, 20% at risk or overweight. But when you go from 06 to this day in 2013, that's huge. We also feel that that's a part of our children uh, with, uh, that we don't sometimes look at, that physical activity helps them focus in the classroom, doesn't it? We've expanded that now to what we're doing called instant recess. Every one of our elementary teachers are, have been trained in using instant recess in the classroom every 10 minute, every day for 10 minutes, getting the kids up, getting them moving around, getting them focused again. And uh, we're in a study with the University of California, San Diego to see if uh, the kids are focused more after they do this 10 minutes of instant recess on top of the 20 minutes that they need to do every 10 days. Will they do better on our local assessments now that we're not doing the CSTs? Um, and it's an exciting time uh, for our students here in Baldwin Park. With these grants, Jim, we've been able to give a stipend to teachers who have a passion for this to ensure that we are moving ahead with the, the recess piece of it, whether it's instant or it's recess during the day, K-8. Um, on top of that, uh, we have made an incredible push as a district in nutrition. We were one of the first districts that decided we're going to keep a cook in every, even with budget cuts, a cook at every school site. Scratch cooking, we know, is a much better way to give children um, nutrition during the day than something that you might package and warm up in a um, microwave. We also have at every one of our school sites, a uh, fruit and salad bar. This year, every one of those. And our kids are absolutely loving this, Jim. We wanted to make sure that our itty bitties wanted to take that fruit and vegetable. So through nutrition services, we've hired at the elementary level, someone right there at the salad bar that said, come on back, have some fruit, have some vegetables, you can come back and get as many as you want. It has really been terrific to see that happen, happening. And that came out of that uh, healthy eating, active living because our teens are great. Uh, I was a high school administrator. And they, they came to the district and said, look, a few years back, why don't we have a salad bar and a fruit bar? Why don't we have some barbecue barbecues out at the school site to where we can have some turkey burgers and, and other things that are healthy? So. Um, I'm very proud of where we've gone to look at the whole child within this district and really started with our kids saying, hey, how about that? But we're continuing it and uh, the proof is in the pudding. A uh, study that we have done with UCLA and Cal Berkeley have stated that this district has made an impact on our children's health. That's a really, uh, I think one of the few districts that I'm aware of that, that really identified whole child. Yes. That. Uh, Chris, can you say anything, kind of switching gears uh, a little bit, but about outreach to the business community? Um, or maybe not. Okay. <laughs> um, I think you had mentioned uh, some of the... Okay. You want me to talk about, you're going to splice this together, the uh, CTE, the yes. Career Technical Education? Yes. Okay. Okay. That's one thing I left off. All right, I'm just talking. I just feel like I'm spewing things out, but I hope it's okay. Um, when you take a look also at the Baldwin Park Unified School District through um, our superintendent, Mark Skavarna, and our board's vision, we've really looked at uh, developing uh, and moving ahead with not only looking at bonds and, and as Mark has shared before, what we've done to look at state funding to move ahead and develop um, outside, uh, outside, uh, develop career technical education, um, uh, educate. Uh. Start over. Okay. Take two. 
Okay. Tell us about, uh, we've talked about the whole child. Yeah. Uh, there's not only a, is there a focus with athletics and, and physical wellness and well-being uh, and visual performing arts, but there seems to, to also be a focus with career and technical education. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Certainly, I sure can, Jim. A part of our vision that was developed uh, here with our board and our community a few years back was really college and career readiness. So what we've done in the Baldwin Park Unified School District and continue to, continue to develop is really taking a look at programs and getting input from the businesses on what they're looking for with regard to the type of student that may not go on to the college level but may look at a career with training beyond that. We have a state-of-the-art career technical education auto shop at Baum Park High School and one that will be going on at North Park High School. It's being built. It will be our companion program. And we really went out and we took a look at asking folks out there at the auto industry, what do you need? Uh, what type of worker, what type of jobs would these young men and, and women want if they came out of the automobile industry? And we talked to Penske, we talked to Toyota, uh, we talked to uh, Banks Limited, and they shared with us, we need a student that could come out and have be NAFTA certified. NAFTA certification is, and I'm not, I certainly don't even know how to barely put gas in my car, but I've certainly learned that NAFTA certification is, is an opportunity to get a certi certificate in uh, air conditioning and um, every facet that you might have to work on a car. Um, and our students now are coming out with those certifications in partnership with the Regional Occupational Program here in, um, in the San Gabriel Valley. Uh, we have a 2 plus 2 agreement with, uh, with uh, whether we have a 2 plus 2 agreement with our um, adult ed, where as they graduate, they can go on into the adult ed piece and uh, get continue with their certification. We also asked business, what are you looking at as far as uh, other areas that might be an opportunity for our students after um, high school? One is refrigeration, that there is a lack of qualified um, young men and women that can come out and have those skills. So we're breaking ground as we talk today on developing that program with helps, hopes that that will be supported through our regional occupational program, and these are academy type programs. We also have a A plus M plus certification program that has a two plus two agreement with um, Pasadena City College where our young men and ladies can go out, get college credit for their Java and programming and move on in that direction. And, and that was something that uh, we went out and Cisco came in and shared with us what are Cisco and other corporations shared, what are the next steps that uh, a district might need to be able to support that type of student. Great. Is there anything else that you want to add before we finish up today? I'm just very proud to to be at a place uh, to be in a in a in a district, Jim, that STEM to CERN values education, that we've raised the expectations and bars for our students, but also we've given them support systems to be truly successful. Education is the even playing field, and I'm very proud of what we've done here over the past uh, 10, 16 years. Great. So my question is, um, is there one thing that you can point to that Mark has facilitated that makes you guys different? Because you know, you could be West Covina, you could be Pasadena, talking about all the programs they've got going on, but if they didn't get number one, so what's the, that intangible, is there an intangible that he brought through that's uh, allowing this to happen at a higher level as an achievement gap? I th that's a hard one. I think the intangible that Mark Skavarna brings to a district is that he thinks out of the box, okay? He really looks at education through a different lens. And he never takes no at all as an answer for anything. He took a look at a district when he first came in and said, my goodness gracious, look at the facilities. Okay, when our parents come up with their carriages, they're coming into facilities that 
absolutely would be appalling to his children. So what did he do? He got together with the board and said, we can do better. We must do better for these children. And Mark grew up right in Covina. Okay, his parents were educators. So we started with that, showing the, showing the public that we value your students coming to our campuses and they will come to pristine looking schools. We will make sure that when you drop that child off at Central School, they will be safe, secure, in an environment that they can learn. He, he went out and got grants for programs um, and he brought people in that had a passion. Many of the folks that are here are homegrown. They have been students here, they have been teachers here, and now they're administrators here. Those that really love this community, those that have leadership ability. Um, and he's one that uh, is a visionary. And I, I, you look at it, look at it stem to CERN, whether it's our dual language program, whether it's our AP honors, um, visual and performing art, arts program, or our career technical education. And then, um, what kind of words though, like, you know, because you, you get out you, you get out in the classrooms and mm -hmm. you're seeing what's going on. How are the, how does that impact the students that this has been happening? systemically, year in and year out, constant improvement. What would people notice, uh, you know, when they get in the classrooms different from 10, 15 years ago? Oh, goodness. Uh, what people would notice the difference between 10 and 15 years ago? Let me just give you one example. When I came to the district, the expectations, and, and, and it's only, I certainly don't, want to say anything negatively about anything that happened before. But let me give you one example of how this has changed. It was only good enough for our students to graduate with a paragraph. A paragraph, okay? That was a, the writing benchmark for this district. Now great, okay, but no. The expectations were raised. And it really took taking some of those older teachers and infusing with a new generation of young teachers to say that, yes, we hired a lot of kids that came from Baldwin Park, that graduated, went on, and saw how difficult it might be to go to the university. And they wanted to come back and say, look, we must raise these expectations if our community is going to be successful and they have. The achievement gap has shrunk. Students are writing at a better level. They're getting into terrific universities. But once again, we needed to develop curriculum, show teachers how they could teach better by delivering the curriculum, getting to give them, giving them some tools to be able to support the students. So, okay, then what, what makes you different? Have you, have you, because you get out to conferences and talk to other people in other districts, like, mm -hmm. are you, how are you different than most other school districts with this kind of kid? Well, I, I, I would get back to what we've, we've talked about earlier. We look at the whole child, okay? And that's not to say that our, our other districts aren't but we look at the whole child and the whole community. Um, and we value the community. We value our parents. We value our parent input. But once again, we had visitors from Santa Maria. They could not get over how respectful our students were on our high school campuses. They went and talked to kids, and kids shared with them that A, our teachers care about us, okay? Our teachers care about us. Our teachers work very hard to make sure we're successful. I'm able to be in a piano class as an elective because this district did not cut back on those. 
Our children are great emissaries for us. Okay.